We bring in our good friend Darren Dreger, and I say, well, I feel like I see you every day, Dregs. I haven't seen you for some time. I see you on TV every day. Happy New Year, my friend. How are you? I'm doing well. Happy New Year, Rod. Yeah, I'm going to get to the taxi squads and all that in a second. I sure enjoyed the photo of the coyote just outside your backyard. Was that unnerving for you? Nah, come on, man. We're Western Canadian, right? It's not the first time I've seen a coyote. Um, but I, I, I do take, you know, I, I'm not making light of it here, okay? But we get coyote warnings in this part of Ontario probably a half a dozen times over the course of a winter. And it's not like they're going to pack attack uh, people. You know, it's always, you know, make sure you got your pets, you know, looked after and uh, in a fence and all of those things. I'm not worried about my pet. I've got a 135 pound Great Dane who had one look out the window at the coyote. It was like 7.15 in the morning. And she literally went, no need to worry about that. And she jumped back into bed and uh, I got the camera out and started taking pictures. So it's not a big deal here. Okay, I got you. Good, good to hear. Good to hear. Tough, sounds like a good, tough, sasky, uh, great Dane, but it was just on the other side of Darren's fence, folks. Follow Darren Dreger on Instagram. You'll see it for yourself. So to the business at hand, um, those taxi yeah. squads, it's interesting. So you got 23-man rosters plus the taxi squad. Can you talk about – we're going to be hearing that term a lot, I think, Dregs, over this season. Yeah, and, I mean, it's a backup plan, right? Uh, I don't think that <clears throat> anyone is naive enough – throughout the National Hockey League, starting with the commissioner's office through the 31 clubs to expect that COVID-19 is just magically going to disappear. I mean, that would be a godsend, but that's not reality. So there had to be a way to expand the rosters, and they've done that. And you can go anywhere from four to six players on that taxi squad. But to get to the taxi squad, you have to clear waivers. And so as you were teeing up the segment, Rod, I'm thinking about the, the myriad of possibilities. Uh, I think today, today and certainly tomorrow, um, the, the cast of players who are going to be on waivers is going to be fascinating. Uh, I'm not saying for certain that somebody like Corey Perry, who I absolutely love and I've enjoyed his career all the way through, is most definitely going to be on the Montreal Canadiens taxi squad. But in, in my insider brain, I'm thinking of, well, if that's the role that the Habs see him playing, you know, they've got to put him on waivers. Will Corey Perry clear waivers? And I don't think he will. I don't think he will. Based on the amount he's being paid, $750,000, I think that there would be a team in the NHL that would say, okay, I, I like the, the DNA of Corey Perry. I like the fact he's a playoff performer. You know, we have room for that type of character. So uh, I, I use him because I, I'm fascinated by what might happen because I do believe that that was the intent of the Montreal Canadiens was to have a player like Corey Perry on their taxi squad, but he's got to get to that taxi squad first, and there'll be others that are just as intriguing, I'm sure. For sure, and I saw he scored against Carey yeah. Price uh, last night in the intra-squad game for Montreal, yeah. but fr from what I hear, and you're talking to more NHL yeah. people than I am, but the few that I am, it's we'll get the NHL going, and then we'll get the AHL going, and then we'll get the Western Hockey League going all in a six. They got it all planned out. I mean, it looks willy-nilly from the outside. It's very clearly not. So is it once these taxi squads are, de are uh, determined, then they move to the AHL as their focus? Is that what you're hearing? I think they want to get the National Hockey League rolling on Wednesday first. And and then you're right. You know, look at the different levels of uh, the design of the league and uh, how the teams are, are going to push forward, maybe in the first few days. But the American Hockey League is a key developmental league for every NHL club, obviously. Now, we know that there are a few that have opted out, independent teams that just financially can't make it work without fans in the building. Uh, but if there is no American Hockey League, then you got to wonder about, okay, well, well, what happens to the development strategies of these NHL clubs? And I know that, as you allude to, Rod, the Western Hockey League put out a, a release late last week or on the weekend saying that they plan to play a 24-game schedule. But what was noted in that statement was as soon as they get sign-off from the provincial health authorities, well, there's no guarantee that they're getting sign-off from the provincial health authorities. And that applies here in Ontario as well. Ontario isn't as bold as the Western League. Uh, Dave Branch, the commissioner, is not issuing any statements yet. 
But there again, you're talking about the layers of development for these NHL teams. If there is no AHL in Ontario, you know, what happens to Cole Perfetti, drafted 10th overall by the Winnipeg Jets? He came back from Edmonton in the World Juniors back into Whitby, Ontario, spent a bit of time with his family. Now he's back in Winnipeg and he's in his seven, uh, seven day quarantine. But if there's no Saginaw in the Ontario Hockey League this year, you know, what do the Winnipeg Jets do with Cole Perfetti? So there's lots of reason why these NHL teams are concerned, not only about the American League, but about the major junior leagues as well. It's a double-edged sword, Dregs, because they make just a little announcement, 24 games, and fans yeah. just go nuts. They're like, Where, are fans going to be there? What are the playoffs? Are they going to head out of Memorial Cup, right? Oh, and you, the leagues are just going, can you just hang on? I mean, you want the yeah. interest, yet it's kind of a pain for the leagues, right? Yeah, it, it 100% is. And, you know, I can't imagine that fans are going to be allowed to, anytime soon in Canada. I, I just, I mean, we know that that's not an option for the National Hockey League, so why would it be an option for Major Junior Hockey or the BC Junior League or, or any of the other junior leagues uh, across the country? I'm okay with what the Western League did, and I can appreciate and understand, you know, why they would, would want to keep that league relevant. I mean, it is a huge feeder system to the National Hockey League. You know, so is the Ontario League, so is the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. I guess if I were in a marketing position with any of those leagues, I'd do pretty much what the Western League did. Give the fans some form of appetite. But the fans are still going to be the fans. And if they can't get in the building, then are all of these games going to be televised? And and how are they doing that? Is it uh, the My Hockey format that they have here in Ontario that's going to cover all of these major junior games? So there's a lot of logistical hurdles that uh, have to be overcome before any of this flies. Bingo. Sounds like you were in our morning meeting, like you were sitting right over there on the couch, because that's exactly what we were talking about. But lastly, Dregs, we did talk about this Canadian division, and let's not forget Bill Foley spilled the beans way back in the fall that this is what happened. And now here we are. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. But my brother-in-law said this will get boring, and he's a hockey fan. I'm like, I don't think it'll get boring. What do you think about the yeah. Scotia division? No, I don't know. I, I think your brother-in-law needs to focus on something else if he's bored <laughs> by what we're about to see. Uh, I think it's going to be terrific. I, I really, truly do. You know, we we invent rivalries because rivalries are supposed to be age old. But who's kidding who? I mean, the, the Montreal Canadiens and the Boston Bruins play each other in healthier times. It's not the same as it was 30 years ago. It just isn't. But I think Calgary Edmonton playing each other as many times as they're going to play each other is going to get really, really interesting. And especially when you look at uh, how they've devised the schedules, right? What do you think game three, Rod, is going to look like um, if you're a team that's maybe taking it on the chin in game one or game two? You've lost the first two games of that three game set and you're playing three games back to back to back. And now you're starting to look at the standings and you're pissed off because you realize in a 56 game schedule, you can't have a three game losing skid. And, and maybe it's the battle of the Kachuk brothers, you know, Calgary and Ottawa and Brady has been a pain in the arse of the Calgary flames. And likewise for Matthew, by the time you get to game three, it's not going to be a dud. It's going to be fiery playoff environment type of hockey. So uh, I love it. I'm very much looking forward to it starting on Wednesday, but I want one year of it. I want one shortened season of it, and then hopefully the world is a healthier place and we can go back to the way things once were and back to the divisions and all of that. Well, I love it, and I I get why. I'd love it forever. I would love it forever. But just uh, my last question, and I'm sorry to keep you so long. Yeah. This is just so much fun. No, you worry. cut... Well, you cut your NHL teeth in Winnipeg. I'd be right in saying that, right? I so I'm just yeah. looking at the Jets and this Canadian rival, this division. They don't really have a rival. And how, other than geographics, how do you build up a rivalry? Playing them in the playoffs all the time, exactly. right? And they don't really yeah. have that. Like, who is the Jets' no. historic rival, Dregs? I know. Uh, I mean, historic, it would be, and it's not even a rivalry, but, you know, the Winnipeg Jets used to have good teams, and then they'd end up playing the, the mighty Edmonton Oilers in round one of the playoffs, and they'd get bounced every year by Wayne Gretzky and company. So, yeah, you're right. You know, geographically, I suppose it should be the Minnesota Wild, shouldn't it? Yeah. 
in in terms of proximity, but it's it's not really. I'll tell you, I'll give you one storyline, Rod, and I know you got to go here. No, um, that's good. I, I, I'm I'm going to be intrigued by the number of injuries that we're going to see out of the gate and you know the nagging stuff like the groin pulls and the muscle strains and all of that you mentioned the winnipeg jets so the winnipeg jets open on thursday and then they play a span of five games in seven nights five games in seven nights and and the rest of the canadian division play four in six nights i mean these guys haven't had any preseason games they've had a shortened training camp I mean, they're playing uh, intra-squad or scrimmages, but that's exactly what they are. They're not, you know, NHL-quality games. I think we're going to see a slew of injuries. Here's hoping we don't, but I guess it beats COVID, so uh, that's looking at the bright side of things. Well, you know, we've had these chats with you, but the NFL, they said that they didn't have the injuries, but that's one game a week, not yeah. five and seven nights. The NBA yeah. – yeah. didn't have those injuries, but even that wasn't as condensed. So you're right. It's something to watch right. for sure. Dregs, thanks for the time as always. It's been uh, fun. Stay safe, my friends. Watch out for coyotes and uh, we'll chat with you down the line. Yeah, all right, Rod. Thanks for having me. TSN's Darren Dreger, the pride of Langenberg, joining us here on the RP Show. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.